Hello everyone and welcome back to another Fam Two Cents video in what might be the last cooking video for Potato Month and uh, quite possibly the last cooking video of the year. Uh, we're making fried potato balls which are pretty simple but can be a little tricky depending on um, how you decide to go about this. But making any potatoes that'll be rolled up and fried usually requires the same first step and that is peeling dicing and then boiling your potatoes and you want to do that until you can stab them with a knife with no resistance uh, so that way you can go ahead and start mashing those up and then adding all of your wonderful ingredients that you want to add afterwards uh, in order to make these extra delicious one interesting but important step that I picked up when making potatoes like this is a good way to get rid of the excess moisture is take those potatoes after you empty out the water, toss them right back into the pot with the heat still on and that will uh, help the potatoes release their moisture that much faster. So a little quicker than just setting them to the side. Uh, don't trip too much if they stick to the bottom of the pan, that's normal. Next step comes the mashing. So what I usually do here is I take my butter while the potatoes are still very hot and I just toss those right in with the potatoes and then I'll add cheese. Uh, this is the point where you can add chives, um, uh, whatever, uh, bacon bits or whatever you have in the house. Uh, this is gonna be the part where you wanna go ahead and add that to your potatoes, mash them up while they're still hot and then um, naturally what we're going to do is sit this to the side to chill so that it's more workable uh, and that the flavors develop and all that good stuff and um, you can go ahead and move to the next step. Now don't forget to season these uh, at this point. You want to go ahead and add a little bit of salt and pepper and maybe some paprika, possibly some garlic if you want to uh, at this stage. It's kind of up to you. This part is there's no strict parameters to what you put in your potatoes. You can do it however you want. Next order of business is to start to roll and form your little potato balls. Now these could vary uh, depending on what size your spoon is or whatever it is you're using to scoop these out. Uh, generally speaking, you want them to be really uniform. So I use an ice cream scoop because that helps give you almost exact portions every time. Uh, you're going to be frying multiple at one time so you want to make sure that they're the same size so they all fry at the same rate and uh, none end up you know cooking faster or slower than the other ones otherwise this process is very straightforward just roll them up After you're done rolling them, I transfer them over to a little sheet tray here that I'm going to toss into the freezer to help them chill a little further. Um, now I tried this two different ways. I chilled them uh, to where they were still kind of soft but easily to work with uh, and that didn't quite work out as planned. So um, what I decided to do was freeze them afterwards, but we'll get to that part of the video when we get there. Right now, you can see me making the dredge here. I have a uh, cornstarch because I, I literally don't have any flour in my house right now. Uh, and I wasn't aware of that, but it is what it is. Cornstarch actually helps make things you fry crispier anyway, so I just dealt with it. Uh, I added a little salt and pepper to the cornstarch and then over here I have panko breadcrumbs and just regular breadcrumbs mixed together. I usually like to do panko and regular mixed because you have like the big kind of thicker pieces uh, mixed with the thinner pieces. It's you're covering more area, you know, just makes it a little more uniform, I think. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but it's something that I do. Completely up to you if you want to imitate it. Now, as I said, these are still relatively soft, like they are chilled, so they're easier to work with, but they're still pretty soft. And as I said, I tried to fry them and things didn't go that great as you will see here now. So as you can see here, some of the potatoes were fine. They, they looked pretty good. Um, but the problem was some of them were still cold on the inside and the other ones that weren't cold on the inside 
ended up bursting. So I had an idea. Instead of just chilling them, I was going to freeze them completely. Uh, I had a little strategy on how to deal with this. Um, one thing to keep in mind is everything on the inside is already cooked, presumably. Uh, the potatoes are done. They don't need to be cooked any further. The only objective here is to brown the outside and make a, you know, obviously a decent crust on the outer part of the potato. So with that in mind, I decided to try something different. So I decided to stop my project temporarily and put the potatoes in the freezer so that way they can freeze completely. I had to remake my dredge, obviously. Uh, the only major difference here is I added a little hot sauce into the egg mixture this time because it does help with the coloration. It doesn't really change the flavor that much and that's how I get that really nice color when it comes to the results after it's done frying. And uh, I actually took the cornstarch mixture and mixed it together with the breadcrumbs this time around. It's just all in the same thing. So, um, And I also decided to double dip them just to make sure that that outer layer was thick enough uh, to be able to handle what I was going to attempt. And it actually worked out pretty good. So this is what I did. But before we get a look at that, take a look at these. Don't these look like donuts? They really look like donuts or like frozen hush puppies or something. I don't know. I just thought that was pretty cool, so I recorded it. I'm a loser. Leave me alone. So here was the strategy. I was going to place the potato balls into the oil, and before the oil really started to, to kick up and you start seeing a whole lot of activity in there, I would actually take them out. And uh, I did two batches because I only had 10 left and after the first five fried, I would take those out. Uh, and once that, like I said, once you started seeing a lot of activity in that oil, it really started to kick in or kick up uh, from the new batch going in there. I would take it out before it even got to that point. And I just kept kind of alternating and doing that repeatedly until I got the desired color on the outer layer that I wanted. And not only did this help in browning them without them bursting, it also actually helped completely cook the inside. Uh, well, not cook because it's already cooked, but it helped completely thaw the inside so the potatoes were warmed all the way through. And I'll be honest with you guys, I was pretty skeptical about this actually working, but it, it worked out really well, actually. It actually turned out to be a really good idea, so. There you go. And when everything is said and done, hopefully the end result is wonderfully cooked and delicious, crunchy on the outside, but really soft and fluffy on the inside, uh, fried potato balls. Now, you know, it, it took some trial and error to do this and I am no five-star chef. I do have a cooking channel, but I do not claim to be a chef at all. Um, I did what I could to make these the best that I could and it just worked out. That's not to say that the way I did it is the correct way. Uh, you may have to do some trial and error. There may be some things that work better uh, for you or not. If so, and you find those things out, definitely share that with me down in the comment section below. Otherwise, thank you guys for watching. Thank you for an amazing year. I almost hit my goal of 1,000 subscribers before the end of the year, but I didn't quite make it, which is fine. Um, but your support and uh, the rate in which this channel has been growing has still been pretty awesome and I greatly appreciate it. So thank you for watching uh, and I'll see you guys on the next one.